Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. In this episode I'm going to be talking about little Alfie Steele. And the reason why I'm talking about this case is because recently when I was flicking through TikTok it actually popped up and a video of the neighbours 999 call is the one that actually popped up and I will put it in this video for you to watch but I will tell you before we get into the story properly it is very distressing it involves the murder of a nine-year-old boy and <clears throat> as you'll have seen on my channel I've covered a lot of cases like this but I feel like these cases need brought to the public's attention they need to be kept in the limelight just so people know exactly what is going on because I hadn't even heard of this case until I seen it pop up on TikTok. So I delved into it and funnily enough, one of my subscribers actually said, could I cover this case? Because a lot of the videos that I do cover on my channel are ones that have been requested by you lot sitting at home watching these videos. But if there is any videos that you want us to cover, drop it in the comments and I'll be sure to get round to it. But I have got a long list of videos to get through, and this is one of them. But what I've done, I've getting a few articles up on my computer here, just so I don't miss out any facts, because I would hate to get any facts wrong, especially with cases like this. So the headline on it was, a mother and her partner who killed her nine-year-old son in the bath following months of abuse have been jailed. But they've only just been sentenced last year. On the sentences that they got, I'll just talk a little bit about who they are actually first. So the mother is Carla Scott, and she was convicted of manslaughter. She was actually cleared of the murder. Even though you can blatantly see she knew what was going on, but how could you not know something was happening to your son inside of your house? And this perpetrator, this animal, which whatever you would like to call him, Dirk Howell wasn't even Alfie's real father. He'd only been in his life a short while and he made his life a misery by the articles that I've read through. But look at exactly what he'd done to him. So Dirk Howell was convicted of the murder, rightly so. It's exactly what he'd done. But he was jailed for a minimum of 32 years while his mother, Carla Scott, if that's what you can actually call her. She's not a real mother. A mother wouldn't allow something like this to happen to their son in their own house. She was jailed for manslaughter. She was given 27 years, but she must serve at least 17 years out of that. It's not a parole, or there might be a parole sentence now, because when you get this sort of sentence, you've got to serve a certain time before you're eligible for parole, but she will. No matter what, even if she doesn't get a parole after 17 years, she will be released because she will have a release date. It's just the minimum amount of time she's got to serve before she comes up. But it's different to her life sentence. She'll still have a release date. So whether or not she complies while she's in prison to try and get out after the 17-year mark, she gets released regardless because she has a release date. But in my eyes, she should have been given a life sentence for letting this happen. But um, he was, little Alfie had been subjected to a cruel regime and his body had more than 50 injuries. And he actually died after being held under the water in the bath. Because they were trying to see it, it was punishment. They were punishing him and they were held, keeping him held under the bath water. But then they killed him. They're trying to say that accidentally killed him. They were trying to say that he fell asleep in the bath. <clears throat> But the neighbour, I'll actually put the video on for you now so you can listen to it, but it is quite distressing, so viewer, discretion is advised. Police emergency. Hello, it sounds like my neighbours are doing something bad to their kid in the bath, like they're really hurting them. Okay. Right, so do you know what their names are? The woman's called Carla, and the guy's called Dean. Yes. So the female is Carla, and the <laughs> bloke is who? Um, I think he's called Dean. Okay, so how long has it been going on for today? 
I've just heard some noise over the last oh, 15 minutes and I heard lots of banging and it sounded like someone flashing around in a bathtub went into the toilet and it sounds like you can hear this guy he's being hit and held under the water or something and like loads of flashing around. It's concerning because I know they have got social services involvement as well and the police have been before a few times. But that was the video of the neighbour who had run 999 because she heard what was going on. Now, I actually feel sorry for that lady, knowing that she heard what was going on. She's got to live with that for the rest of her life, knowing that little Alfie is never coming back, and she was actually listening to what was going on. Um, she tried her best. She intervened. She rang 999. She tried to save his life. She said she could hear what was going on, and obviously that's what convicted them. But um, on another, another video that I'm going to show you now is when the police arrive at the house. Now take a look at this. Look at how calm she is, knowing that her son is dead. He's lying there. But I'll let you, look, I'll let you watch the video now. Ambulance service, is the patient breathing? No, he's not. Okay. Is it... He fell asleep in the bath. Okay, can I take the, the location? The post yeah, it's, one of the dress? it's fashion drive. Okay, so an ambulance has been arranged for the patient. Right. Is there risk of coronavirus? Um, no, no, no. Okay, so what's happening? But he, 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 he fell asleep in the bath. He got as asthma, and when he was a baby, he had pneumonia. So he fell asleep in the bath? Yeah. Right, okay. Have you, is he, so is he submerged in water, or...? Yes. Right, have you got him out? Yes, I've got him out, yeah. Okay. We're, we're doing um, CPR. You do doing CPR, CPR, okay. Yeah. How long ago did you find him? It was about an hour ago I found him. An hour ago you found no, him? I, no, I went in there. Oh, yeah. And I, I got him out straight away. And I, I, Sorry, you're not making much sense here. Sorry. Uh, Sorry. I was, it's all right, it's all right. When did you first come across him? About two, about ten minutes ago. About ten minutes ago, that's yes. what I meant, thank you. Yeah, sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay, it's all right, my love, it's okay. He's, I think he passed okay. the table, he's got some... Okay, we'll go. Okay, do you want to... Right. I don't worry, I won't. Am I actually Dean? Who's that, Dean? Dean. Dean, yeah. So obviously when the police have come, she's trying to say that he'd fell asleep in the bath. But they both went up on trial and it took, it took the jurors 10 hours to convict them over the killing. And like I mentioned, he was convicted for the murder. She escaped the murder charge and was done on the manslaughter. It says, during the six-week trial, the jurors heard how Alfie's final moments were punctuated by being repeatedly beaten, forced to stand outside, and dunked headfirst into cold baths. Prosecutor Michelle Healy, KC, KC is the King's Counsel, it used to be QC, but just to clarify that, said the defendants thought it was acceptable to hit him with belts or a slider like a heavy-duty flip-flop and use other more sinister forms of punishments. Jurors, jurors were told the pair on the 18th of February 2021 tried to cover up the killing by delaying calling 999 after Alfie was either drowned, asphyxiated, or went into cardiac arrest. She went on to claim that Alfie had fallen asleep while enjoying a warm bath 
but his many injuries on low body temperature, minus 23 degrees, indicated he had been dead for some time. Prosecutors said he might have been put back in a bath to pass the murder off as accidental drowning. During the trial, it emerged a neighbourhood called 999, which is what I've just told you about. <clears throat> but it goes on to say that there's more than one neighbour had actually called 999 leading up to this. Loads of neighbours had actually reported them. The social services were involved. Um, at the time of Alfie's death, Scott, the mother, was subject of a social services plan designed to protect him, with one of the rules being career criminal howl, not, was not allowed to stay overnight at the house. But the pair continuously flouted this requirement. Howell would stay over, assault Alfie, Alfie sorry, and throw cold water at him. A safe garden review will now explore what more could have been done. Scott had Alfie during a previous relationship which ended in 2017 in which children's services had been involved. During his evidence, Howell estimated he had spent 22 years in prison for various offences including battery, theft, burglary and drug charges. He had claimed he had tried to revive Alfie by performing CPR but CCTV showed him leaving the house before paramedics arrived and later attempting to board a train but he was arrested at Droitwich, uh, Droitwich Railway Station. But there's another video that I watched as well where it shows when, when, he, when he knew what was going on, when he was finally going to be getting caught. He's left the house like it describes there and he's legged it. He's run away and he's getting chased by the police. Mr. Justice Wall said 18th of February had been another day in which the couple had decided Alfie was to be tortured. Addressing the couple, he told them, you have both refused to tell the truth about the day of Alfie's death, preferring to lie, to pretend that it was no more than a tragic accident to cover up for one another. What is clear is that Alfie did not have the quiet death you tried to portray, a death in which he had an epileptic fit and gently fell asleep in the bath. His death was violent and brutal. Alfie was described by his family as a charming, funny and inquisitive young boy whose kindness and cheeky smile was enough to melt your heart. Mr. Scott's wife, Alena, said when she had met him at, a, at 18 months old, he had wrapped his arms around her in a lovely hug, describing him as gentle and loving. She added, he also, the life and soul of our family. So that was, I'll just mention a bit further before this, sorry when he mentions about Alfie's grandfather. So in a victim statement read to the court, Alfie's grandfather, Paul Scott, said he was haunted by the fact Alfie's last words were him shout, Alfie's last words were him shouting for me. I saw Alfie's lifeless body being carried to the helicopter. Since then, it has felt like a nightmare, he said. It hurts that he will never be able to make his own decisions. He has been taken from me. I will never forget to see that cheeky smile. I will never get to see that cheeky smile again, says his grandfather. Now imagine how must how heartbreaking that must be for his grandfather. I mean that was hard for me reading that, reading what his granddad actually said. Give us goosebumps reading that. Feel so sorry for the family. But um I just thought I would bring this case to light and let everybody know about the case and show people these videos because I hadn't actually heard of this case before <clears throat> a lot of these cases don't get highlighted i've just done the case on baby p on one of my previous videos i am about about stephen barker coming up for parole and i actually when i went and seen something it said i couldn't believe the amount of child deaths or children that have been killed in this sort of way since the case of baby p there was absolutely can't remember the exact figure. I should have had a look at it first before I'd done this, but the, the figure was astounding. The amount of kids that are getting killed in this sort of way by parents that are supposed to be loving them is just unbelievable. But Dirk Howell and Carl, Carla Scott, the ones responsible for this, 
will hopefully not be having a very good time in prison. Because I can tell you now, the likes of Dirk Howell will be living on the VP wings in prison, the vulnerable prisoner wings. Carla Scott will be in amongst women that will hate this sort of thing. A bit like any other female inmate that's in for killing children. She will have a tough time because I've spoke with ex-female prisoners about what happens inside the women's prisons and they don't take kindly to these sort of people. And Dirk Howell, again, even though he's on protection with other predators that have done similar things to him, at some point throughout his sentence, he will become under attack because just about every person that's in prison for these sort of offences get attacked at some point throughout the sentence. Whether it's when they first go in or whether it's 10, 20 years down the line, people don't forget about these type of offenders. More so the staff, the screws, the screws read up on these cases. Even if it's 20 years down the line, like I just mentioned there, a young screw might be coming in. They're reading up on this. Dirk Howell might be living amongst the normal location lads in a category C prison, thinking that people have forgotten about it. People don't know who he is because he's changed that much. But then unsupp unsurprisingly, one day, when one of the screws have let loose to one of the other inmates who, who these people actually are, then they will become under attack and prison justice will catch up to them. So I just thought I would highlight a little bit about what happens inside of prison and that these predators, perpetrators, whatever you want to call them, prison justice will catch up to them at some point throughout their sentence. But I just wanted to bring that to the attention because, like I mentioned, when I've seen these videos, I found them quite upsetting and distressing, but I don't feel like they've been highlighted enough, so I thought I would bring it to the attention of the viewers, especially when one of them had actually commented asking us to do a video on this. But again, if there's any more videos you would like us to cover, let us know in the comments section because these type of videos, even though I've mentioned they're quite disturbing, people like to hear about them. I'd like to hear about what's going to happen to the perpetrators whilst they're in prison. But I'll leave that one there for now. And we will leave a little thought with poor Alfie's family, especially the grandparents and little Alfie. Hopefully he rests in peace. These topics are quite graphic and disturbing. But I will cover them as hard as they might be sometimes. But I am again... I'll spare a second thought for the victim and the family but i hope you are enjoying the content people but remember to comment like and subscribe take care everybody